So today I wanted to discuss praxis and what that looks like, right? And, and what it looks like in your life, very specifically in activism and advocacy and how you have to show up for that, right? I consistently talk to <laughs> people doing the work, hey Jim, of anti-racist education, decolonization, mental health, all the sorts of things. And people are so gung-ho. They're ready, right? They're like, I want to do this. I want this. I want it. I want liberation. I want freedom. And they jump in and, and they want this for somebody else, etc. And why I take the lens that I take on anti-racist education and decolonization by reminding white people of what colonization has done to you and what you have lost is because the truth of the matter is nobody's that altruistic. <laughs> Everybody takes a break. Everybody takes a breath, and very specifically, if you are white, the breath is, whew, at least I'm not black. And that is a reality. And that is just what it is. That's just truth. That is understanding levels of oppression, hierarchies, et cetera, et cetera. So when we're talking praxis in this work, right? Hey, sweetheart. We're talking about the definition of praxis is practice as distinguished from theory. What does that mean? It means actually doing the work you say you're going to do. So when I remind you of what you have lost in this and what you could do to get to liberation, to free yourself, it is about you finding the work to do. You have to do that, right? So all of that to be said is yesterday I shared a post uh, and I called out my husband for being a deputy dad. That's what he has become. Those are the truths. I looked back over the first 12 years of Facebook um, Father's Day posts and every single one was about lifting him up, what an amazing father, partner, husband, all of the things that he wants. Hey, Karen. And nobody ever told me that's private. What if your kids see it? <laughs> but I posted what he has become now. And not on this platform, appreciate you guys, but on other platforms, you know, this is not for public consumption. And that's wild to me because this goes into praxis. My life's work is quite literally, literally advocacy and activism. It's how I live my life. So I want you to think about how the hell could I advocate for you if I wouldn't advocate for myself, for my own children, if I will not do the work in my own space, if I refuse to confront a person that's bringing me harm, why would you trust me to guide you in anything? Why? And so when we're discussing praxis, I want you to think about the people that you follow, right? Because there's so many people out here. DEIA has like become the new fucking bag to go after, you know, and, and, and it's exhausting because it's still taking on a capitalist <laughs> nature of like getting money. And I get it. I'm surviving capitalism like the rest of you guys. But what is their praxis? Where do you see it? show up in their life. You are your first home. If you will advocate for you, I don't believe you. You need more people. <laughs> it's wild. It is literally wild to me. And I talk about, or other, you know, DEIA educators will talk about amplify marginalized voices. The most marginalized person on earth is any child. Very specifically and unambiguously black child. Let's go further into those hierarchies and unambiguously black, poor, queer, trans, disabled, non-Christian child. So if you are following educators that are telling you amplify marginalized voices, you know, speak truth to power, disrupt the systems, but they're quiet, you're following the wrong people. And if my post yesterday disrupted you or made you feel uncomfortable, you shouldn't be following me. <laughs> and I'm absolutely 100% okay with that. Because 
Across platforms, I have about 100,000 followers and I'll take six that are willing to do the work. I will take six that will actively take their theory into practice. I will take six that will say, yes, Des, I'm ready for my own personal revolution. And you live out loud without fucking exception. And I want that power too. And that is literally how I sustain myself in this work. You think that that post was made half-heartedly? I gave that man a year and to do the bare minimum, which is what we often do with you in this work of anti-racism and decolonization. I'm asking you for the bare minimum. When I post my educational substack, I'm asking for $8 a month and nothing is paywalled. Bare minimum. I'm saying here's this simple $5 a month, come into community, be supported. Bare minimum. You don't show up for yourselves. So I don't really expect you to show up for other people. But if you really want to do this work, I'm going to teach you how to show up for yourself. Because I promise you in every single aspect of my life, I show up for me. And I damn sure I'm going to show up for my kids. And it is wild that you want to disrupt systems but refuse to do the work, the inner work that it takes. It took a lot for me to post that because there is shame in that. There is shame. You see all the other posts of beautiful fathers and I can look back on my own and see the years of dedication from him. Years. I have shared our life for the past 14 years and always bigged him up. Best thing fucking since sliced bread. Couldn't tell me nothing. So I have every single right to post when it's not that way. And that's praxis. And it's uncomfortable. And it's going to be uncomfortable. You can't possibly think you're going to disrupt oppressive systems and be comfortable. I'm going to change the world and be comfortable. You're going to be wildly uncomfortable. You're going to have to say things that make people uncomfortable. You're going to have to do things that make people uncomfortable. That make them not even want to fuck with you. And that's okay. But you got to stand on it. And there's a space for anger and righteous anger. And I have every single right to have righteous anger and call it out. And more importantly, last little note before I wrap this up. I don't think you can smoke cigarettes on live and I need one and some coffee before I go pick up the boy. It is absolutely insane. 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 Because the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So I'm not using ableist language. It's literally insane to think you will make any sort of world change without disrupting every fucking thing about your life that is harming you, oppressing you, holding you back. So if you really want to do this work, get to disrupting something. Use your voice. You've been silenced your whole life. Somebody told you, shut the fuck up. I just never listened. And I'm not going to. And I'm going to leave you with this little nugget from my mother, Guy Russell song. When I used to fuck up, because I was a huge fuck up. Huge. And she never accepted that. And she said, Desi, the only people that will accept you giving your least don't expect anything of you. So me admonishing Marcus, putting him up there, is I expect better from him. Because I know him. I know better. I've lived with better. I loved him better. So I 100% expect and will hold him to the commitment that he made when he decided to have these children. And I will hold you to your commitments that you claim to have for decolonization, liberation, anti-racism. So if you want to do that work, be held accountable and really have a personal revolution, follow me, do the things, the bare minimum that I'm fucking asking, not even asking for so much, the bare minimum. And I will hold your hand through the process. If you don't, you don't have praxis. And that is exactly why you stay going in circles, doing insane things. Because you're doing the same shit, expecting a different result.